Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 26th of May. India's Jammu and Kashmir sees upsurge in violence tense after separatists sentenced to life in prison. Ousted former Pakistan PM Imran Khan gives six-day ultimatum to government to announce fresh polls. And student unions protest as Nepal raises retail fuel price, stalking inflation fears. And now for all the details. India's Jammu and Kashmir territory has seen an upsurge in violence this week as security forces neutralized six terrorists in the past 24 hours, while terrorists shot dead a female TV performer and a police officer, officials said on Thursday. This came following the conviction of the region's best-known separatist Yasin Malik in a terror funding case. Malik was sentenced to life in prison on Wednesday. Three terrorists were neutralized on Thursday in an encounter in Kufwara district of India's Jammu and Kashmir after security forces intercepted a group infiltrating from across the border. Police confirmed the slain terrorists were affiliated with Pakistan-based Lashkar-e-Taiba or LET outfit. The encounter came within 24 hours after three Pakistani terrorists of jaish e mohammed and a policeman were killed in a gunfight in Baramula district and the region's best-known separatist, Yasin Malik, was sentenced to life in prison by a court in New Delhi in a 2017 terror funding case. On Wednesday evening, Amreen Bhatt, a 35-year-old Kashmiri television and social media performer was shot dead by L.E.T. terrorists outside her home in Badgam district. Her 10-year-old nephew also received a bullet injury on his arm. On Tuesday, suspected terrorists also killed a policeman and injured his minor daughter outside their house in Srinagar district. More than a dozen people, mostly police, have been killed in Kashmir Valley this year. One of the dead was a Kashmiri Hindu government employee worrying the region's tiny minority community. Security forces have already stepped up their operations, neutralizing 78 terrorists this year. The upsurge in violence comes as the federal government is also planning Kashmir's biggest annual Hindu pilgrimage to the Amarnath Cave Shrine, starting June 30. Up to 800,000 visitors are expected. In news from Pakistan, ousted former Prime Minister and Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf Chairman Imran Khan has given the incumbent government an ultimatum to announce elections within six days or have the entire nation return to the capital Islamabad. Khan disbanded the protest march by supporters on Thursday following clashes with police outside the parliament on Wednesday evening. Pakistan's ousted Prime Minister Imran Khan disbanded a protest march by supporters on Thursday after clashes with police outside the parliament the previous evening, but he warned that they would return unless an election was called within six days. Khan, chairman of PTI, Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf Party, has said that the confidence vote that toppled him and ushered in the coalition government, led by Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif last month, was the result of a U.S. conspiracy and he is demanding a fresh election to show he has national support. He warned the government that he will march on the capital again if it did not meet his demands. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court on Thursday dismissed a petition filed by the federal government seeking contempt proceedings against Imran Khan for violating the Apex Court's orders with regard to the party's Freedom March. 
The court had on Wednesday ordered the government and the PTI to constitute respective negotiating committees and meet at 10 p.m. to ensure peaceful and safe conduct of the party's long march to the capital. However, negotiations were not held as both sides claimed the other had not shown up. Taking to Twitter, Interior Minister Rana Sanaullah said Imran had misled the court by taking permission for holding the rally at a specific place in the capital but later announcing it would be held at D. Chowk. While Khan had entered Islamabad in the early hours of Thursday and marched towards D. Chowk, the federal government authorized the deployment of the army in the red zone to protect important government buildings. Pakistan's finance minister Mifta Ismail has said the government remains committed to reviving the six billion US dollar IMF program, while talks with the global money lender remained inconclusive this week. Meanwhile, Pakistan's foreign minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari said the ongoing bailout deal is outdated as the country faces an unprecedented crisis in the changing global scenario. Pakistan's Finance Minister Mifta Ismail on Thursday said that the government remains committed to reviving IMF, the International Monetary Fund program, after talks on the seventh review under the six billion US dollars funding program remained inconclusive. Ismail on Twitter said that the IMF team emphasized the importance of rolling back unfounded fuel and power subsidies, which were given by the previous PM Imran Khan's government and are costing the cash-trapped country billions as global oil prices rise. He said the government would need to have a tight monetary policy amid high inflation and a widening current account deficit. A removal of fuel subsidies would likely have political consequences for the country's new coalition government with elections expected within 16 months. Meanwhile, Pakistan's Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari on the sidelines of the World Economic Forum in Davos on Wednesday said the ongoing IMF bailout deal is outdated given a number of global crises as the country struggles to implement targets set by the lender. This deal is a pre-COVID deal, it is a pre-Afghanistan uh, fallout deal, it is a pre-Ukrainian crisis deal, it is a pre-inflation deal and it is unfair, unrealistic to expect a developing country like Pakistan uh, to navigate these geopolitical uh, issues, the, the impact on food security, on our water security, on our energy security and, and inflation as it is everywhere else in the world uh, in, with this outdated deal in place. A pending tranche of over 900 million US dollars is contingent on a successful IMF review and would also unlock other multilateral and bilateral funding for Pakistan, whose foreign reserves have fallen to 10.5 billion US dollars, covering just two months' worth of imports. In news from Nepal, Nepal's state owned oil company has hiked the retail prices for fuels, including petrol and cooking gas, by up to 12.5% because of rising global oil prices, following which student unions held a protest in Kathmandu demanding the withdrawal of the recent hike. Student unions affiliated with ruling as well as opposition parties in Nepal held a protest on Wednesday outside state-owned oil company Nepal Oil Corporation NOC against the recent hike in price of petroleum products in the country. The NOC on Sunday hiked the prices of petrol, diesel, kerosene, aviation fuel and cooking gas by 10 rupees per litre. The price of cooking gas was increased by nearly rupees 200 per cylinder. Protesters urged the government to review the high taxation on petroleum products, identify sources for renewable energy and promote its use, and rescind a monopoly in the import and supplies of petroleum products. Telco mule bondu bana. Kuch aye jay student atho aye jay kune professional banda. Pani telco mule borda kiri. Ami sabai lai aje aye jay middle class family ma bosse ko ami lai telco mule bondu bana. Kuch sabai product ho mule bondu. Par telco mule borde kar da. Yo aje ko kura matro hoy na. Jabo jabo pani dunia ma kune samasya aur aye raagosha. Tabe yo samasya lai bahana bana aye ra telco mule aye nikale aye nikamle bondu de aye kosa. Despite the increase in fuel prices in the domestic market, the NOC has clarified that it will still face losses. In addition, it needs to pay 43 billion Nepali rupees to supplier Indian Oil Corporation by May.
only 20.60 billion has been cleared so far due to cash shortage. People of Nepal are facing a surge in food and energy prices as annual retail inflation accelerated to a five-year high of 7.28% in the month through mid-April. The government has also banned luxury goods imports in the country and raised fuel prices several times this year to curb the capital flows. More news from Nepal. Home to Mount Everest, the world's tallest mountain, Nepal also boasts of having the planet's shortest living male teenager. Dor Bahadur Khangpangi has been proclaimed as the world's shortest teenager, living male and received the Guinness World Records holder certificate at a simple function from Nepal Tourism Board Chief Dhananjay Rekmi in Kathmandu on Tuesday. Kangpangi, who measured 73.43 centimeters, which is 2 feet 4.9 inches in March this year, was born on 14 November 2004 and studies in grade 1 in his village. In news from Afghanistan, since seizing power in Afghanistan last year, the Taliban authorities have imposed several policies and practices restricting the human rights and freedoms of Afghan women and girls. Recently, the Afghan women held a book fair in Kabul encouraging people, especially the youngsters, to raise public awareness of reading and promote the culture of book reading among countrymen. For the first time since the Taliban took over Afghanistan last August, a street book fair was held by several women in Kabul. The 2J book fair held recently displayed more than 1,000 books on different subjects including culture, literature, politics and economy. Visitors at the book fair appreciated the initiative to raise public awareness of reading and also extended their support. بالا ببریم سطح خشونت سطح سطح خشونت و این آن برچیده میشه کلمش برچیده میشه However, this comes at a time when the Taliban has imposed severe restrictions on women and girls' rights. Earlier this month, the Taliban ordered women to cover their faces in public, a return to a signature policy of Islamist groups past hardline rule. They also asked television broadcasters to ensure that female presenters on local stations cover their faces when on air. Under the Taliban previous rule from 1996 to 2001, women had to cover, could not work and girls were banned from school. But after seizing power in August last year, the Taliban said it would respect women's rights. However, in March, the Taliban backtracked on their announcement that high schools would open for girls, saying they would remain closed until a plan was drawn up in accordance with Islamic law for them to reopen. Scores of Buddhist monks and nuns gathered in India's northern Ladakh territory this week to pray for world peace as they mark the Monlam Chanmo festival. The annual five-day prayer event is held in the third Tibetan lunar month in the Himalayan region. Hundreds of Buddhist monks and nuns from different monasteries gathered in India's northern Ladakh territory on Wednesday to offer prayers to Mark Monlam Chenmo, also known as the Great Prayer Festival. The monks and nuns chanted prayers and performed prayer rituals for world peace as the event was held after the two-year hiatus due to COVID-19 pandemic. The annual five-day event was established in Tibet in 1409 by Tsongkhapa, the founder of the Geluk tradition. It is held in the third Tibetan lunar month in Ladakh. Ladakh Mullam Chinmo Namak Varshik Puja Hamare calendar ke anusar Tisiri man ke ekisi pachista panch din ka hota hai to usme Hamare Ladakh ke pure Ladakh hisse ke lama ekatar hoke pure charon sampar jaye ka puja panch din ka karte hai wall piece ke liye. 
The main purpose of Monlam Chenmo festival is to pray for the long life of the holy masters of all Buddhist traditions and for the survival and spread of the dharma or sacred teachings. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.